$15.4 billion. That's how much Ray Dalio is worth. Let's go on an epic adventure with a real life money genius and billionaire, Ray Dalio. He's going to show us how money actually works. It's like unlocking a hidden treasure chest in the world of finance. Get ready to be the smartest kid on the block when it comes to money. Well, he's not a kid, but you get the point. Imagine you could understand all the tricky stuff about money and the economy. After this video, you'll be like a money expert knowing all the secrets of how money works. It's gonna be awesome. Okay, let's start. Billionaire Ray Dalio takes us way back to a time in 1933 to show us how things that happened a long time ago are happening again. It's important that you understand the saying, those who do not understand history are doomed to repeat it. And so I started studying in history and I found out the same thing happened on March 3rd, 1933. Roosevelt did the exact same same thing for the exact same reason, leading to the exact same result. And so studying past periods that didn't happen in my lifetime, like we haven't been through a war before and we haven't been through uh, a civil war or we haven't been in the circumstances. First, we'll talk about debt and printing money. It's like when you have a small problem and you try to hide it, but it just gets bigger and bigger. This can make things cost more, which is called inflation. Creation of an enormous amount of debt and printing printing of money to monetize the debt. That's number one. And so we'll talk about inflation and where we are in that cycle. Next, we have big disagreements in our country. It's like when people in school can't agree on something and it causes a bigger argument. Uh, the second, but very interrelated to this, is the large internal conflicts that we are having. Populism of the left and populism of the right and values differences that is producing a conflict. And populism means that some representative who will fight for me on my cause against the other side. That means not compromise, not be in the middle, but to fight to win at all costs. Then there's the big competition between countries. It's like when two schools are trying to be the best, there always has to be a winner. There's no everyone wins trophies in real life, unless you're a communist, but you don't want to play that game. 1945, when this world order began, as all world orders, there's a war, there's a dominant power. The dominant power sets the rules. And when the dominant power sets the rules, uh, then you have a period of uh, peace and prosperity. And so the United States in 1945 had 80% of the world's money. It had half of world GDP. It had a monopoly on the uh, military power. And so we came into the American world order. Dalio also talks about money losing its value. Like when your favorite collectible action figure isn't as cool anymore. Remember when Pokemon cards were dead and no one played with them? Then they made an epic comeback and Logan Paul spent millions on just one card. What was thought to once only be a myth yeah. is now sitting in front of me inside of a custom Maverick case. <laughs> Yeah, well, what Dalio was talking about is the opposite of that. Money is super valuable and then it all goes to shit. Like we've seen in Argentina, once a powerhouse of South America to now there are people starving to death because of inflation. So we are in a position on the financial one to be in a position where you cannot raise living standards by raising money and credit. In other words, you, if you increase money, then the value of money is going to go down. And one man's debts are another man's assets. And so uh, when they get negative returns by holding a debt asset, they're going to sell that debt asset and that produces a, uh, a problem. And that that's over a period of time. And we can't forget about the Federal Reserve, which is like a group of people that tries to balance how much things cost and how the economy grows. My personal opinion, after seeing what happened in 2020 in the US, they're all idiots who don't care about the future of our kids and our country. It seems like they were just born into the right families and didn't actually earn it. The Fed understands, and not central banks know that when inflation is undesirably high and the economy is relatively strong, you put on the brakes, and that when the reverse is the case, you put on the gas. And they don't understand, I think, monetary inflation inflation enough. Dalio thinks things might get a bit tough by 2024. Like when you know something challenging is coming up, let's get real. 
If you haven't felt the shift in the economy in 2023, you're probably not running a legitimate business. 2024, 2025, and 2026 are going to be tougher years. And remember, hard times create strong men. Strong men create good times. Good times create weak men, and weak men create hard times. Focus on preparing yourself for what's to come. As we have inflation, um, that's a big, going to be a big political thing, and it's going to cause greater polarity. There's a risk that not either side accepts losing because of the populism and you put more financial strain and things get worse. Conditions are likely to be significantly worse, for example, in 2024 than they are now. Just take a normal economic cycle and where you are. Lastly, what is money really? Dalio thinks we're changing how we think about money, like with digital money and gold. I'm taking all of this wisdom in and diversifying my portfolio into Bitcoin, gold, and silver. It's my moral obligation to set my bloodline up for success since no one else has done it yet. And I know no one is coming to save me. What is money and how can we not only digitalize it, which makes it some extent efficient, but also the real questions. Can it maintain value so it will not be depreciated by central banks? That's a key thing. Can can it be transferred, used all around the world, accepted for purchases and sales all around the world? Then it has to do with issues like, can it be private? Um, there's a saying in Gold's case, which is, it's the only uh, financial asset that you can own um, that is private and you can move around that isn't dependent on somebody paying you money, paying you something. So as a medium of exchange. So crypto, those in a fiat world, uh, naturally becomes a alternative uh, consideration. So what do we do with all this info? Easy, take action, keep learning about money. Think about different ways to save or invest and plan for the future. Ask yourself, what is my relationship with money? Do I have limiting beliefs around money? If you have a bad relationship or limiting beliefs before you invest anything, you must clear those thoughts and emotions. You'll never be successful in a world of capitalism if you don't understand how money works. I am going to be bringing you more info from these billionaires, so hit that subscribe button and go watch this video here if you want to know and see how billionaire Chamath would start over in 2024 if he had no money.